Hello, I'm Christina and today I'm going to show you how I colored this short comic in Adobe Photoshop. Even if your illustration is not a comic, you can use these coloring techniques for any other kind of illustration. In case you want to follow along exactly, the canvas size that I'm using for this drawing is 40 by 40 centimeters and the resolution is 300 dpi. You can check your canvas size by going to image, canvas size and your resolution by going to image, image size. If you notice that this file size is slowing down your computer or your Photoshop a little bit, feel free to bring it down a little. It's not going to change the techniques that we'll be using in this video. I normally sketch on paper first and take a picture of the sketch with my phone. Then I drag and drop the photo of the sketch directly into Photoshop. The lines in the sketch are a little bit wobbly, so I press Ctrl T to do free transform. Now I can click and drag on the corners of this box while pressing Ctrl to distort the image and fix the proportions a little bit. Okay, now that I have the sketch in place, I lower the opacity of the sketch layer so that I can see things better when I'm painting on top of it. First, I will create the vignettes. So using the shape tool, I create a square. To make sure it's a perfect square and not a rectangle, press shift while you click and drag. And now down here, I'm going to set the stroke width of the square to 10 pixels to make it a little bit thicker. I have also named the layer of this square rectangle one. It doesn't matter what you name it. And it also doesn't matter much now that we only have three layers. But once you have 20 layers or more, you will want all of them to be organized and tidy and well named. Now that I have one vignette, I use the move tool. Uh, the shortcut is V to duplicate this square. Make sure the auto select box is unchecked up here in the move tool and press Alt, Shift, click and drag to duplicate the square. The Alt key is to duplicate the square and the Shift key is to move the copy in a straight line. I will repeat the same process again, this time selecting the two top squares. I will select the layers, press Alt, Shift, click and drag to duplicate the two squares. And now I will select all of them and center them a little bit in the canvas. Now I'm going to rename the layers to keep everything organized and put them in a folder to keep them out of the way. I create a new layer and that's where the line work is going to be. Now I'm creating four more layers for the line work. You can keep everything in one layer, but since each scene is in one little square, I have created four separate layers and I'm going to put them in another folder to keep things organized. Before I start with the line work, I'm going to create a new layer and add the text first. Because the text is such an important part of the comic, I want to make sure that it fits before I start drawing, because I don't want to later struggle and have to change the drawing because the text doesn't fit. So I'm going to do the text first. I'm using a font called Ames, I think. It's free to download and they also have a premium version. I'll put the link on the description below. If you want to rotate the text like I'm doing here, make sure you are in the correct layer in the layers panel. Then take the move tool, shortcut V, and press Ctrl T for free transform. Instead of creating new text layers in the layers panel, I use the move tool and the Alt key to duplicate existing text layers to make the process a little bit faster. And that way I create text for all of the bubbles and boxes. This step that I'm doing now is optional, so feel free to skip it. I like to do a color sketch in one single layer to see if the colors that I had in mind actually work well together when I see them on the canvas. And now I can finally start with the inking. I have already created the layers for the line work, so I'm going to use those. For this drawing, I use the standard round brush with pressure sensitivity and 100% opacity, hardness and flow. 
there are no tricks here, I simply paint over my sketch and try to get the lines as clean as possible. The only thing that I do a little bit differently is the text bubbles. To make them I create a new layer and I select the shape tool in the ellipse form. I change it to path in the top menu instead of shape like we had it before and then I create a roughly round shape that is going to contain the text. Next to the layers panel is the paths panel, so I click on it, I right click on the path and select stroke. I uncheck simulate pressure and click OK. Now I don't need the path anymore so I can go back to the paths panel, right click on the path again and select delete path. The process of line work is going to be the same for all of the scenes, so I'm going to speed this part up. I do have a couple of tips for you. If you're doing a part of the drawing where you think you're going to make a mistake, you can always create a new layer so that you're not afraid to erase around what you're drawing at the moment. And then you can always merge the layers later by selecting both of them. You can click on one press shift, click on the other, and then right click and select merge layers. Another tip is to reuse elements that you have already drawn, like I'm doing here with this calendar. It's going to be present in two of the scenes, so instead of drawing it twice, I'm duplicating the layer with the move tool and the alt key. Here I'm doing the same thing with the pen and the tablet. I'm using the lasso tool to select the parts that I want to copy and then using the move tool and the alt key to duplicate them into the new scene. Then I use ctrl T to do free transform and change the perspective and the proportions and of course I will have to fix it manually once this is done but it saved me a little bit of time and the objects are also going to look more similar than if I drew them from scratch. Now that all of the line work is finished, I can start with the coloring. I normally start with things that I know for sure what color they're going to be. And one of those things is the text bubbles, which are going to be white. I'm going to turn on the color of the background since the background is also white, just so I can see what I'm doing when I'm coloring them. This process of coloring everything is normally very time consuming. There are ways to make it a little bit faster, but that's a story for another video. I normally use a separate layer for all of the things that are the same color. For example, one layer for the text bubbles, one layer for the hair, one layer for the skin, and so on. And I keep them all together in a folder named colors in the layers panel. Now I'm coloring the skin of my character and I'm going to show you the reason why I personally prefer to have all of the elements that are the same color in one single layer. I've chosen this random color for the skin tone and I'm painting all of the parts that are skin in the illustration. Now let's say that I'm not very happy with this color and I want to change it. I can always go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation and here I can use the sliders to adjust the color as much as I want. You can do this for anything, any element in your illustration as long as all of the things that you want to modify are on the same layer. I follow the same process for the rest of the colors in the drawing, using a single layer for all of the elements that have the same color. I forgot to mention earlier that all of my color layers are below the line layers in the layers panel. Here I'm using the standard round brush and the eraser to color within the lines. Instead of clicking on the brush tool and the eraser tool on the menu on the left, I'm using the shortcuts to do things a little faster. B is for the brush and E is for the eraser. Once all the colors are in place, I can work on the shading. I select the color folder containing all of the color layers, right click on it and select duplicate group. Now I click on the copy and select merge group. It doesn't matter what you name it, as long as you know what's in it. I named it color all. Now I control click on the little icon next to the layer name, just to select everything that's on the layer. I'm going to hide that layer and create a new layer, which I'm going to name shading. 
I don't want to be distracted by the outlines of the selection, so I'm going to hide them by pressing Ctrl H. The selection is now invisible, but it's still active. Now I'm going to choose a very light purple color for the shading. And finally, using the bucket tool, shortcut G, I'm going to fill whatever is in the selection with this very light purple color. Now I'm going to go to the layer mode and select multiply. You can see the difference between having the shading on and off. And you can also see that by using a selection, we have been very quickly able to only shade the colors in the foreground and avoid the background. At this point, you can use image adjustments, hue saturation to modify the color of your shadow if you're not happy with it. I have to admit I made a small mistake here, but I'm going to leave it in and show you how I fix it. And the mistake I made was I colored the text bubbles and the text boxes, which shouldn't have any shadow. Instead of going in with the eraser and manually erase the shading from them, I'm going to try and find a quicker way to do it. I select the shading layer in the layers panel, and then I'm going to scroll down and find the layer where the color of the speech bubbles is, and I'm going to control click on it. At this point, I am on the shading layer, but I have the bubbles layer selected. I press delete on my keyboard and that deletes the shading from only the bubbles, which I had selected. Now we can finally adjust the shadows. Make sure you have the shading layer selected. Go to layer, layer mask, reveal all. This creates a layer mask on the layer that you have selected. And, and if you look down here, you can see that whatever colors you had selected have changed it to black and white. That is because you can only paint in grayscale on your layer mask. You can see here how when I paint with black on the layer mask, it's as if the layer disappears. So whatever is black on the layer mask is completely transparent and whatever is white is completely opaque and whatever is in between will be sort of a mix of opacity. I hope that is a bit clear. I will try to make a different video focusing only on layer masks because it's a little bit complicated to understand. But basically what I'm gonna do on this step is use the brush to paint either black or white on the layer mask depending on whether I want light or shadow. Using this technique allows me to paint the light instead of painting the shadows, which is a little bit easier for me. But you can always do the opposite by selecting hide all when you create your layer mask. That's all the shading done. And now to finish it off, I'm going to add a special effect that I really liked. It's called color dodge. To do it, I create a new layer. I name it color dodge and I set the layer mode to color dodge. To do this, I use a very big brush with low opacity and very low hardness, so a soft brush. And I softly paint over the image. It's important not to overdo it because if you have this effect all over the image, it's not going to look very special. I normally add it at focal points of the image, like the eyes of a character or something important. And that's it for this drawing. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try to respond or make a new video about it in the future. It would help me a lot if you liked and subscribed so I appreciate it so much if you do. Have a great day!